All right, everybody, Board of Assessors meeting, November 2nd, 2022. Um, Lee Whitcomb is most likely not going to be able to attend at all. She will Zoom in if she gets an available moment. Things are just very, very busy and near the end where she is. So she's focused 100% on keeping him comfortable. Um, present, Russ French, Roxanne Parent, Veronique is joining us by Zoom and Jan Warner, our fabulous treasurer is here. It is now 5.15 PM. So before we go too far, before we even start reviewing the minutes, I have to make a kind of sorta announcement. After speaking with both Lauren Aldrich and Chris Wilcox of the DOR, it has been brought to our attention that until Roxanne completes the 101 course, you cannot sign any commitments, warrants, abatements, et cetera, anything to do with valuations. I didn't know that. And you also cannot vote on them. Wow. No one told me that. Well, we haven't had a new assessor in 30 years. So <laughs> this is brand new. Because <laughs> I was told I could. Yeah, this is, this, this, is, this is brand new. I mean, you do have a year or two years to complete the course, but until you do, you, it, you can only participate administratively. What the hell is that? So it, you can take part in, you, you can join one of the other assessors on site visits in an administrative, you know, to, to learn. Um, you can do work sessions as long as it's not vote, you know, discussing valuations, really. I mean, how do we, Veronique, help? Well, so I, I think, though, just to be clear, if I understood it correctly, there's two different things that you have to do as a new assessor. One of them, I understood from Chris, only takes like an hour or so. And after that's done, and I forget it was called CW or C, I, I forget the name now. Um, after that's done, then it is legal for a new assessor to sign the commitments. And then they have up to two years to complete the course 101. It very well may be part of the, like the beginning of that course, maybe. I, I'm not sure. I just remember him saying it doesn't take very long. So Roxy, I bet you I, can get I this mean, done for the next meeting. Well, I only Year yep. complete that quoting course. quoting I, i'm just going to read this word per word assessors who do not meet the minimum standards which was based on the email titled hasn't completed course 101 um cannot are not qualified to perform the statutory duties of the office means just that they are not able to sign commitments warrants abatements etc any duty that they would be normally tasked with would be null and void until they complete the necessary training. Hmm. So anything that you sign to this point, we need to redo and have them sign. Have who sign? Russ and Lee. Oh, oh you know, oh. as long if it has Russ and Lee's signature on it, it's fine. already it's fine. Mm -hmm. But anything that just has like yours and Russ's or oh, yours well, and that's Lee's, nothing. We haven't right, done that. The, well, the warrant. We're, well, everything we, we signed well, last week. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, because how, how many? Oh, because Lee wasn't here. Right. So. The chap oh. the chapters, well, the chapters are in-house and Lee will sign them when she returns. So that those aren't huge. Um, the biggest thing is the warrants that were done a few weeks, a couple of weeks ago. We'll have to redo those. That's interesting because I talked to someone at the DOR about um, my obligation, and she says all I had to do was pass one to four and get those because it's in sections mm -hmm. and she said to pass to get one and one through four done and then mm -hmm. you can sign things have you completed one through four no but i'm okay. just at, well, i want to make sure what's going on one through four may very well be what veronique was just referring to i don't know does she know well so i'm looking it up right now online for what's required <laughs> of an assessor you can do that yourself on mass.gov under the dor and um it does list all the requirements for a new assessor. Um, you know, so I'm not going to go through it while we're on the on the meeting here, but I can forward right, it right. to you if you want. Right. Um, 
it does talk about required training. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to see if I can get an idea what sections, because sections one through four very well may be. Yes, assessment administration. Yeah. It, it very well may be that that is the section, sections that need to be completed to do those. Um, but even so, you haven't completed them, so. No, I, I was under the understanding the that it, I could do it up to a year and that was it, so I had no Actually, it's, it's two years, I just found out. I thought the new law, well, the new law is one year, but that's your, you are, uh, what's the word, grandfathered because you were in office before September. So you do still, from what I understand, have two years, but you still have to take that first little bit to be allowed to do all the signatures and stuff. I think part of the reason Lee had said one year is that her term is only one year. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> there you go, of course, <laughs> yeah. You can complete it any time after your terms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically that, that's where we're at and that's where we're starting and that's going to eliminate quite a bit off of the agenda. We can still review the minutes and we can not review any recent sales or listings because I'm gonna be honest, I haven't even looked any up today. Well, there's a new one posted. New one so posted? New house being up for sale. Okay, I like I said, I just, I haven't had time to go into the different websites to get. So what am I, needs, well, wait website. a minute, just what am I here to do then? Or well, what you, can I do? <laughs> you put a lot on the agenda that has nothing to do with valuations. But unfortunately, I found out a very short time ago that Lee was not going to be able to attend. Mm -hmm. So, and I know that most of this is going, you're going to want to converse with her about. I don't know how much you guys can talk about it. Well, I mean, it, we can't do anything on it. Well, we, we like can we can talk about it. But yeah, we can. can. Yeah, we can. We can look at things. We can talk about anything. We just can't vote. So I, I can't vote anything on anything anyway. Anything right? that has to do with money. No. You anything can't. that has to do with money. Okay. Basically, you can't vote on whether to approve an abatement, an exemption, uh, excise abatement, a oh. chapter, mm -hmm. a bill. Okay. Okay, and I mean, I'm sorry that this email just came over this afternoon, so it's not like we've been hiding this from you. It just got this today. So, okay. So, do we want to review the minutes from last week? <laughs> I don't know what's it gonna. Oh, a lot of this we can't even work on. Right. Lee hasn't given the information and we can't talk about it. I'm aware. Mm -hmm. Oh, because we had a, I don't know if I could vote on it or whatever, but we were supposed to decide on to about the Patriot Properties proposal, because that had to be submitted to um, the town, uh, the meeting, if we wanted to go meeting. the select right. meeting, and it had to be decided tonight, whether we, because you were brought, asked questions about right. what you, and, and And I think, um, frankly, that it makes much more sense to um, approach the select board about using ARPA funds. Um, which I agree 100 percent. Yeah, because we already we done that recently for both the treasurer and the clerk's office with new software. So to me, it makes perfect sense to do the same thing um, for the assessors if you know, because it is a short time frame for you. And that can be done at any select board meeting. So, yeah. yeah. Right. And it's kind of one of the purposes for the ARPA funds are expenditures that are a one time. Mm -hmm. You know, something something that comes up that we need the extra funds for. Mm -hmm. Okay. And software is a biggie. 
So where are we with the Patriot thing? I mean, Jan's here, I'm assuming she's here. She's to... not here about Patriot. She was oh. here to talk actually for you. Um, for me. <laughs> she's, here. she's here for you, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm not sure where we're at with the Patriot thing. I haven't unfortunately had a lot of communication with Lee since last week. Um, again, from what I understand, Alan is declining very rapidly and pretty much taking up a, a lot of her, her focus is on him. So there hasn't, we haven't really talked about much of anything. We've emailed a little bit back and forth. Um, phone conversations have been very brief and few. So so there's nothing to sign. I mean, won't do any good if just I'm the only one can sign. Right, but unfortunately, I mean, what I have here is I have two motor vehicle abatements and just a few chapter applications. Um, what happened to the one that we had to come in and sign? It's all set. It's all set? It's all set. Okay. <laughs> That's all set. I talked to Lee and... Um, got her authorization to sign her name on the summaries. Okay. So that one's all set. Um, we do have a split of land. And basically it, it was big farm split up between the brothers and yeah. it was all chapter. So it's just basically acknowledgements continuing each section that was divided among the family in the chapter. So it's just that's the one we talked about yeah. last week. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, but other than that, I mean, unfortunately, these all need to be voted on before they can be signed. Which is, you know, um, which brings us all the way down to we really can't set a date for the Zoom presentation. I know you wanted to discuss something about the website. Was there something particular that you saw that you want to change or well, added? Or I thought you said you were going to be putting up the property card. Oh, my goodness, Roxanne. What? <laughs> this was a week ago. I, I only have so many hours in the day. Well, I, I don't I, know. This is what you told me. You yeah, I didn't say I was going to do it right immediately. I said it, I would do it. But it's not going to happen. I, unfortunately, it, again, many, many hats. And I only have so many hours I'm allowed to work for the assessors. That's fine. And but, it's but, not going to happen immediately. It will happen when I have time. And it will also might hinge on if we change to Patriot. Because again, it's going to be a totally different property card. I understand that. But it doesn't help people that need to put an abatement right now and they don't understand the property card. Then they really should make come in or make a phone call. I mean, that's just it. I, if we didn't have the ability to put it on the website, like we didn't up until yesterday. I know that's they've why. They've always I, made the phone call. I mean, but that was the discussion of doing a Zoom earlier. Oh. And your discussion was, well, I can put it up on the website. I can put it up on the website, but I okay. didn't say I was going to have it done within a day or two. It's election time. I know everyone says it's an excuse. I haven't had a day off since October 16th. And I'm all out with elections, abatements, exemptions, chapters, and Board of Health stuff. And the property card is on my list, but it is not my first priority. I understand, but I was trying to do this in September and everybody commented, well, we're gonna put it up on the website. Oh my, it, so it, it just went live yesterday. I know, I mean, but my it's... point is, we. I was trying to get the Zoom up before well, that even The happened. Zoom, I don't have any control of. I, I must say, um, if, I, if I may, I think it's a really good point that if the board does vote to switch to Patriot, that it's almost a blessing that it's not up on the website right now, because then people are going to have to adjust to new codes next year. You see what I mean? It, it, that's what you were saying, right, Lori? Is that it's going right. to be different what I, what I was saying if you is, switch? I, to, we're we're going to teach them how to interpret and read this property card, but then very possibly switch to Patriot come the beginning of the year, and the property card is going to be. Totally we're going to have to teach them all over again. It, it's. I, I mean, mean, it's still going to have the basic information. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the Patriot property card looks like, and I I 
I don't have access to the program to look at one and to sit down and compare what I, I don't know if their codes are the same. I, I honestly, I don't. Well, know. I'm sure the codes aren't the same. Well, they then we have their own. That they're Massachusetts codes. They all have to be the same. Oh, do they? Mm -hmm. So there you go. Well, then it's it, like I said, it's on the list. But I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to have time to get to it until after the elections are over. And and, and that's and, and if anybody and we've said this a hundred times, if they want to review their property card, come in. And someone, you know, we can review as it as best as they we can. Abatement, yeah. It, it, it's, exactly. Um, well, that was another question. I just went, went over your uh, website, the website that was put up. It's like there's a whole list of things you have to put it list to have to put in for an abatement now. Those guidelines, the guidelines have always been there. They were on the old website too. The guidelines were the the guide the books the links for the books were always there. We just expanded the basic information, so people didn't have to go through and read the entire guidelines. Right. But the requirements haven't changed. They're just actually there to show you. Well, I was just reading where it says um, to to you can't just put, of course you can't just put down I'm too high, but you have to have sales records you have to compare you have to do all these i mean i can pull it up what it says and it's like and it says from the board and i'm thinking where did we decide to have all that requirement to come in and to file for an abatement well everything that's on there was taken from state sites and please don't ask me to quote which ones because i was all over dls and dor websites pulling information mm -hmm. it wasn't made up it was taken off of their websites their website. But my question is, is it a requirement or is it just the suggestions or is it what the, each town can quite ask for? You know, let me pull up the website and does it say it is a requirement? Does it say you are required to do this? Well, I'm just saying that you're well, putting it out I'm there asking. as- a... I'm putting it out there as the DLS and the DOR have it out there. I'm not making things up. I'm not adding. I'm putting it out there as they have it. And things can be changed. It has been reviewed by quite a few people already. Uh, well, I also looked at the, um, when you were applying for uh, abatements, and I kind of read it extensively when I was applying for abatements, and I didn't see all those things List it. Well, maybe you weren't even in the right places. But mm -hmm. I mean, because it was extensive a list of what you have to do to buy, buy for an abatement. Well, you know what? Why don't you tell me how you want it in writing? I don't I'll think it's up it to me. The, as part of the board, you have a say as how you want it, and then it can go to the rest of the board, and they, if they want it changed, you can change it. Right. I think we should discuss it as a board, though and you posted it up already. But I see reasons for abatement. I see that it says where the application is. I see the deadlines. I see the note that says stating my taxes are too high is not a valid reason. Yep. And it does not stay the collection. Information requests. We are authorized by law to request information necessary. Information to include. Okay, it doesn't say it's required, but it's suggested that, you know, you wouldn't create a list of sale prices that you, I mean, you're giving a reason, you know, you're valuing my house too high, this guy lives next door and his is lower, kind of like you did. Yeah. Do your research. That's all it's basically asking for is that you do your research. And I understand all that, but I'm I'm just as saying, you know, shouldn't this be approved by the board before it's put up there on the website yeah. and even discussed before it's put out there? I'll gladly take it all down. Well, my assumption is that that was all approved by the board for the old website, which is why yes. it translated over. So I don't know that that's something that has to be approved every year, but if the board wishes to, obviously you can do that at any time and change it. 
Well, all this information wasn't up on the website before that. I believe this information was buried in links on the website and it was yeah. just brought forward to the front page to save people the trouble of clicking through link after link after link. Right. So these were these were this was information that you had to go in and research under state guidelines. You had that you had to go through links. Then I know were I did there. So but these what I'm trying to say is these were links to state guidelines that you had to go in and search, mm -hmm. not posted as from the Board of Assessors of Conway in this information. Which I'm not so sure it said all this stuff that you're listing here. Yeah. I'm so we, you could certainly put on the future agenda to review the information on the website. That, I mean, that, you know. I mean, it was, I did have, you know, I put it, I, I put out, review the website before it went live. The chair took the time and she said, it looked good to her. She had me add a couple of things, update a couple of forms. I, I guess I didn't see that email to review it before it went live. Did, was it sent to me? I'm just asking. <laughs> I sent emails out to everybody from the Board of Health, the Board of Assessors. I mentioned it verbally last week. At the meeting, this I gave you the link so you could be reviewed. Well, and I did. Didn't I, I went didn't hear live. anything back before it went live, so it went live. And I looked at it, and now I'm just saying, wow. All I'm right. saying that just saying if you if there were things you didn't like, it should have been brought up before the site went live. I guess I didn't get the link to check it out before it went live. So. We said it verbally at the meeting last week. We started, started I, I, verbally, we said, I get, right. said, go to conwaymass.gov. Website's up there. It's pretty complete. Please take a look at it. Mm -hmm. You said, okay. And you left. Okay. Chan? Oh, would you like to? Tell us why you're here. <laughs> yeah, it's just pretty brief. I just need, well, I needed two signatures, but I'm going to have to mail the second one to Lee, I guess. Um, so you're probably aware of this already, but the, the Florence Burnett property out on Ashfield Road, we've um, applied for an F David of foreclosure from the state. It's been granted. Uh, it's soon going to go up to auction. We have an interested party for it. So before I do that, one of the steps is for me to file the affidavit along with the statement that I submitted to the DOR for the affidavit. And I realized I don't have signatures on that statement. So that's all I'm here to do is to get signatures. And um, I guess I can only get yours, Russ, and then I'm gonna yes. mail it and hopefully get it returned uh, friendly. So it's, you know, all of this is kind of a done deal. Here's the affidavit if you wanted to see it. Uh, it's something that Lee's already signed off on online, and she's provided uh, probably 90% of the data. The other 10% mm -hmm. is mine. We've uploaded maps and given the, I think it was 91 it went in uh, tax title. So we've given values through 91 hmm. and all that. Yeah, this has been going on for a long provided time. Provided proof of the tax taking, proof of advertising. Yeah, it's been going on for a long time. So everything is in a row and we're ready to be done. With so it. you, we, you, the town can take it for taxes? Is that yeah, it? the town has taken it for taxes. Oh, really? Yeah. So now we're just filing this affidavit of foreclosure and then we can auction. Once we uh, sell it, if we sell it at auction, we provide a deed, it gets recorded at the registry and it's a done deal. This one we expect probably will not sell at auction because we have to sell it at the tax amount due, which is almost $20,000 and it's only worth 3,100. It's called a land of low value foreclosure. It, it allows us to foreclose without going through land court. The state just signs off on it if you provide a due diligence and use it frequently for properties that have been abandoned and so forth that are hard to track down. So how much, I mean, what is the 
So when acreage, it, is there a certain? 7.1? 7.2. 7.2. Huh. It's, um, it's It doesn't have any road frontage. It's on a hill. It's, you know, like I said, valued, I think it was 3,300 this year. Yeah, it's one of those back lots that's yeah. not buildable or not. It's actually right out behind mm -hmm. Lee's house. Um, but I don't think she's interested in it. No, she, she didn't say she was. No. So. Um, so we expect it's not going to sell at auction because I can't start the bid any lower than the tax amount due. Mm -hmm. And then I have to do another auction. And when it doesn't sell again, then the town can file a deed so that the town owns it. Mm -hmm. And then they can sell it however the town decides to sell it. So they can sell it for $5 if they want at that point. But I have to go through this process to get it back on. Would it be a place that's uh, seeing it can't be a building lot, but feasible for a hunting camp? Well, you have to have a right of way. Is yeah. there a right of way? As far as not, I know, there's no right of way. Not even a right of way. So it's like. It's so only of lot. interest to the abutters. To the abutters. Well, like that one so the, the field so well. has anybody is everybody at uh doesn't have butter that would like it as a wood lot oh okay mm -hmm. but not at twenty thousand dollars no <laughs> 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 so do i need to make a motion to accept this? you don't because this is something that's already been no, done and approved and it. it's just, just a, sign it's sign just and date fine, yeah it's just the final piece of paper to and Lori way. offered to sign on Lee's behalf because Lee's assigned her to, but I'm I'm not really confident that that would hold up as a legal document. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hold off and do it through Lee. I mean, I think I wish this didn't happen tonight, and you could have signed it, and I'd be uh, done yeah, with it. No, because then it, and Lauren said anything that's been signed is null and void. Right. I mean, I wish it. I wish it wasn't. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Russ. Okay. Thank you, Jan. You're welcome. Your company's appreciated as always. <laughs> yeah. um, do you want me to add my two cents on Patriot while I'm here? Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> I mean, you probably already got my emails. I did. So um, I did. You know, I did. I, did. I hear lots of good things about Patriot. It's you know definitely a good program. Tyler is, from what I hear, I don't use either one of them, but I um, interact with people that use them. It's complex and and hard to learn. Um, it's one of those powerful, but um, you know you have to know how to use it type of things. And I've consulted with my experts, and they agree with me that it, it would be better to get things straight on Tyler before you convert, because if you convert broken data, and it is mm -hmm. it is broken right now, <laughs> um, we have a lot of reports on the uh, trans owner ownership transfers incorrect acreage, incorrect assessed owners, stuff that um, hasn't quite been done right in, in your system. So if you convert that bad data, then we're gonna be doubly in trouble. So I would recommend you hire help to get through this, get it straight, and then consider a conversion. Roy Bishop would be maybe a good thought yeah. to bring in and... <clears throat> so, there's a, so you have to go and correct all that incorrect data before anything yeah otherwise it's just going to bring more harsh bring, bring yeah it, you're going garbage in garbage out i guess you're, you're going to get things that transfer over incorrectly to start with because there's always those things that don't yeah. come over quite right but you don't want to have the old stuff plus the new stuff you right. don't want to have to deal with the new stuff we've already talked about the solution um to this year so this year was our actually our first live transfer of data last year you had all the data but we couldn't figure out how to get it out of there. So we had uh, the engineer from the previous software pull it because you were running dual systems, dual systems up until then. So we pulled from the previous software to put into the tax collection. So this year was a first year, it was a standalone. So all, all of the issues really came sure. out. And, mm -hmm. and it seems to me that there's just some processes that need to be relearned, you know, because you, likely do them in a different way that's maybe not easy to understand, but somebody needs to spend more time with training to get that right. It's very hard because Tyler, Tyler doesn't offer training. They yeah. give you a manual Yeah, and they don't offer any training because yeah, they tried to get it when I started. They tried, I think Veronique spoke with someone too. 
about when I first started, is there, does Tyler come out and do training or is there any online training that, and they said, no, they don't offer that. Yeah, they do for a fee. Oh, they do? They do. They do for a fee. Um, and there's also some experts that would come out um, for a fee, some retired people mm -hmm. that work with both Tyler and our tax collection system. So they might be helpful as well. And then once we figure we have a handle on it, what we've proposed is to, you know, pull data, do a pretend bill, mm -hmm. you know, and, and mm -hmm. see where we're at, did everything, target in, you know, focus in on those that have been transferred or might be an issue and see how they turned out in the collection software. Right. And our engineers are willing to work with that too, because it's been a hardship mm -hmm. for them this year too. Right. And I had said that, you know, once we returns that we can you can get all that right. We can get on making those. I mean, because a lot of the, the corrections are misspellings or transposed initials or. Yeah. Um, There's a couple address. of those that don't bother me as much. Yeah, it's, address it's, errors. And it's whatnot. more like I sold my property a year and a half ago. Why am I getting the bill this right. year? Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, last year we manually, in our end, did the transfer of owner, mm -hmm. but it wasn't done on the part of your software. I mean, I know you're having issues where the assessors will look it up and it seems fine on their end, but what right. came over wasn't, wasn't, wasn't what right. they think yeah. it was. Because I did have a couple of calls where someone says, well, it says I have this and I pull out the property card and I pull it up in Tyler and it's like, no, it says this. Right. So somewhere where it's pulling data. It's separating years and, and we don't have it seems yeah, like we it, don't have a handle on where the transfer and what year it's pulling data from to export. I don't know. It's just my it's, inexperience. It's just your software. I think it's just one of the things we don't like about it because it's very hard to understand where it's getting yeah. it. And when you and unfortunately the 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 help people behind Tyler, your IT people, they're not trained in a you know they're they're just regular IT people for software and they don't have any knowledge of assessing or mass assessing or the laws and so they don't really understand a lot of the questions and it makes it sometimes hard mm -hmm. to get what what is this thing doing and they're just like well it's it's yeah. <laughs> yeah so if you were to transfer to Patriot before this is all straightened out I would think you would have to like go over with a fine tooth comb mm -hmm. every single transfer that's happened in the last two years. Yeah, I every one of them, make sure they turned out right. Yeah, I I think it was it it's been the intention for us to sit down and run the you know get those corrections in there, run that test tax run, mm -hmm. make sure that the corrections are there and they held and they stuck and did disappear mm -hmm. after it was committed. Cause that happens. Sometimes you save it, it's there, you hit commit, it goes away. Yeah. It's weird, but run that test run, make sure everything stuck, everything's good. And then yeah. start the process for trans, you know, we've had a couple of people that had their parcel split and, um, the new bill this year went to one of the owners, like everything from both owners now, and they've been owners of multiple properties. Everything went to one, one. owner. How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> People call me and say, wait a minute, I bought a small piece off of so-and-so and I got every one of their bills. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> I'm just curious, how does the abatement process work if something was issued by mistake? Um, the same as always, they yeah, just, they vote they, to abate it. They recognize the mistake, sign off on it. and. But if the actual it. owner didn't get it? Well, what, I have to give them 30 days once I remail their bill. Right. Okay. And the abatement so I have gets to extend filed the and reviewed. If it requires a site visit, then they do a site visit. If it's strictly an error, then the error is just acknowledged and an abatement's yeah. done. Filed, done. Yeah, just done. So just because a bill is mailed to the wrong owner doesn't mean it has to be abated. Right. We can we can change the owner and remail the bill. Right. Oh, and then you have to give them 30 days from when you mail it. Yes. So right. they can pay it, yeah. Yeah. 
Not sure. All right. Okay. We'll, we'll take that under okay. advisement. All right. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. And I will mm -hmm. leave you a pen. <laughs> you sure you don't want to keep that? I'd like to. Go ahead. I got a box. Really? <laughs> You're not the first person who's taken one. <laughs> I had someone use one the other day and go, can I keep it? Really? Can I keep it? And I was like, oh, fine. <laughs> good night. Good night. Bye-bye. I'm off the table Upstairs? No. Ah, uh, have a good time. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I have a question with the uh, abatements. Now, mm -hmm. what what do you Okay, don't accept you. You guys can continue. No, she's going to try and log back in. Okay. But you can, I mean, the recording's back up, so you guys can continue. What are we talking about? <laughs> about abatements. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I was just wondering, you know, simple things like, um, Normally, we would not go out and do a site visit if it's just a simple thing, like a address or something like that. If it's, I don't know about if it's a property line, whether we would then ask them to send in a survey. Why not? Proper people to determine where a property line is. Mm. But is that an abatement when you question your property? Well, if, it, if it's going to change the value. value. If yeah, I was going to say, if they're questioning the property line, they're generally questioning the amount of land they have, the right. square footage or the acreage. Right. So that's going to change the value. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just know of somebody that says, the year in my property card is wrong of the year my house was built. So I'm just wondering if that's uh, just something you straighten out or? I, I would think that we just straighten it out. I don't know. Do they must have a some type of proof that of the year it was built? I, I we would be. I would think we, it would be in the permits. It would be. Yeah, in, that's what I'm going to say. It should be in the permits. Yeah, yeah. That, well, depending. I mean, if it was built in 1942 18. instead of 1945, we've well, been being <laughs> built taxes on it for how many years, and now all of a sudden it's a different date. <laughs> So it's like, it's not hard to do that. Okay. I'm just, just trying to uh, ask questions. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I, if we can't I know. do any signatures on things or I know it. approve anything. This kind of stinks. Mm -hmm. Luckily, there isn't a lot. Did you get some more wrong? Um, chapters. Yeah, yeah there, there's a few here. There's only um, 
I believe four outstanding and two of those are just because I'm waiting for signatures on the second page to come back. You know, we have the paperwork, but they failed, they forgot to sign the second page. Okay. Uh, does, does everything have, to, oh, well, we signed up, except for the ones the other week. Right, the, the chapters we're not, we're not worried about because okay. it's an in-house and Lee can sign them when she gets back. It's, mm -hmm. Oh, it was for um, like um, the vehicle. Right, right. And, and then the um, the tax warrant that we did a few weeks ago, the one that I had you come in and sign oh, the warrant for the property taxes okay. will have to be redone oh. so she can sign it. I mean, it doesn't hurt anything. It's a, we, just for the files, for the records, so, it has to be. So we didn't know that ahead of time? We just found out today. You know, no one ever thought, yeah, yeah I, I, no one was really thinking about it, I guess, because again, we haven't had a new assessor in 20 years, 30 years. Yeah, I've got it. I've got the last one. And that, that's 15. I think I'm up. Yeah. So and you've been an assessor years. for 15 years? Yeah. Okay. And Malcolm was Malcolm was before me. Right. Really? And, and so Lee was before Malcolm. Before me. Right. Lee was like 37 years. Malcolm, I think, was 30. I just years. remember that I had to do of uh, course, I, I yeah. drive the Framingham. Oh, you that's right, because it wasn't available online back right. then. You had so to actually go out there. Framingham for eight weeks, once a week. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I don't even know why I haven't done it because I've been watching their YouTubes on all this stuff. <laughs> I don't know why you haven't either. Because <laughs> I just didn't yeah. think I really, um, it well, was nobody told me I really had to do it immediately to. So I guess. Now I know. I guess now you know. <laughs> so. Kind of messes you up though. Oh, so um, I know we were had discussed, I, I mean, we mentioned it about doing some site visits. Now, um, the new house being built over by me is getting kind of a long, and I don't know if anybody's done a site visit on it. I know, it, yeah, it's just down the road from you. Yeah. It's like, uh, from, from what I understand, you kind of supposed to do a site visit to check the construction of it and all that stuff. Usually, yeah, usually before they um, push sheet rock. And well, that it's kind getting of stuff. pretty close to that. I've just, Is it? Yeah. So, okay, got all the windows in and all that stuff. So, I'm assuming. So, I guess we'll you can do a site visit. Yeah, all we got. <laughs> three days before I leave. So. Oh, wow. you're leaving. Yes, yes, yes. And you're gone till the come back. Come back the 18th. 18th. Oh, so yeah. Crap. What happens if things have to be signed? Nothing gets signed. Nothing right? gets yeah. signed. Nothing gets signed. Um, what I can do. <sighs> Because Lee's not here to sign. No, so and, if I, and even I, if I went home and did the thing. Yeah, I, I mean, there, I mean, there, there's nothing. There's nothing urgent okay. right now. There's nothing that can't sit. I have a motor vehicle abatement that I could always scan to her and say, "Hey, could you review this?" And I can sign it for you with your approval. Mm -hmm. And Russ could sign it, but can't vote on it if she's if she was if she was here they could, they could vote on it right. and she could say yeah sign my name uh, <laughs> but she's not here mm -hmm. you sure you can't zoom in from italy what? can you sure you can't zoom in from italy <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> i had to try i had to try so it looks like i I don't the following know. week's Thanksgiving. Right, 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 right. Um, I'm not sure what we're gonna do. I don't. I mean, there's a there. There's possibility Lee may be home for the next one. Oh, for the 16th. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a possibility, but I sure the heck can't guarantee it because. But it doesn't do any good. You got to sign for me then. Right, and you wouldn't be here to vote because you wouldn't be zooming. <laughs> That's not. Well, I don't. I don't know because it sounded from what Chris was saying that Roxy get it done within in like an hour. 
what was needed to be the done for the signatures. <laughs> so you could probably have, if Lee were back on the 16th and Roxy did it, then you'd have two signatures. So now I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do. I, I, you know what? I would suggest that you speak with um, Lauren Aldrich and just get from her, have her direct you to exactly what you need to do to be able to sign. All right. Can you give me her information? Write it down. <laughs> I can do that. Okay, great. <laughs> I can do that. Okay. And I'll check with her. She is definitely more reachable by email. Okay. Thank, thank, thank. Of course, it just shows her name. It doesn't show her stinking email. I believe it's Aldrich L. Oh, God. Dang it. Can you look it up? My computer's all shut down. Oh, okay. But I might be able to look it up. No, I can't look it up that way because I don't have my sister's email on that. I'll have to, oh, there it is right there at dor.state.mass.us. Yeah. Aldrich, that's an L, by the way. Aldrich L. <laughs> L. <laughs> if that helps. <laughs> okay. Let's say this. <laughs> well, it's L for Lauren. Okay. It's, it's, so okay. it's last name, first initial. Okay. At dor.state.mass.us. Okay. Look at this. I didn't even have to take minutes. Jeez. I'll watch the recording. I'll take the minutes. Okay. I will. I will. I will. So, oh, oh yes. I did want to say something. Which yeah, no. I, it still. says that we approve the application. I, I don't even remember that. But motion to pass the exemption exemption application that was the one yeah we did one exemption it was the one that we we did because she's the only applicant that gets oh 100%. okay yep yep because yep. I, 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 I didn't I'm, yep get what we were saying there. yep that one one exemption application okay okay got that now okay. um i guess my only question was on what we sent out in that letter you know that i questioned um about the exemptions for you know the cover letter that the, yes. the little slip of paper yeah. it's just a little slip of paper right she puts in the right because it was for both the cpa and uh the senior discounts i don't know i didn't look at it i'm she put them with the envelopes and i you know um, i had i had prepped all the letters and all the applications and had them stuffed and ready to go when i could and she just slip them in each oh other. because so i didn't i, I never reviewed it. my thought is because the cpa is only on income only correct i believe so yes and the senior discount is on the whole estate which means mm -hmm. the whole on your assets yes yes so but in the in why i i think question. didn't isn't the letter that went out isn't it with CPF applications? Yes. Okay. And that's why I'm questioning. I don't think we sent anything out that was just the low income senior exemption. I don't think there was, and I think they're either the ones we sent out were blind veteran and CPF. Wait a minute. Say that again. I don't know if we had anyone on the list for seniors that wasn't just the CPF application like you have right there. You said the letter addresses just the CPF? No. That's oh, it addresses the other? Yes, that's oh. what I'm trying to say. To, to me, that, it sounded like you were saying it addressed the CPF. No, the it was for everything. And it says, if you are applying for, well, I hear, low income exemptions of any, of any mm -hmm. you must provide copies of bank investment state bank and investment statements and the income page of your mm -hmm. one of you know mm -hmm. because interest on your investment statements is well, considered income yes but that's on your income tax 
Everything that you need should be on an income tax for the CPA. And we'll have to make a note of that to change it for next year. Because I mean, they're, they went out a month ago, so we can't recall it. Well, I but, guess that was my, my trying to come across mm -hmm. is maybe we should see this and discuss it before it goes out. Um, next year. It won't go out again until next. Well, I know, but, but I know, but I was saying that, you know, did we approve it? It comes from the, the board of assessors and I had never even seen it was this. Because it was probably approved 15 years ago when she started using it. And she just, I think she just updates the year every year. That's, no, that's, because they've never asked for this. I don't know. You never had to put in um, a bank statement, investment statements um, for the CPA. I mean, you, they weren't even, you weren't even asking for- um, not, me, not me. Well, <laughs> <I'm> not. <laughs> the board did not even require um, your income tax. Yeah, income tax. Right. right. Yeah. So this is all new this year. And why I am trying to say that it, it should be gone over by the board before something like this goes out. That's all I'm saying. It's saying from the board of assessors and I didn't even see this. And we're sending out this information that I feel is a little bit incorrect because I don't, it's not that I don't approve. I don't think it should be done. I'm not disagreeing with that. I didn't see it. So yeah. and yeah. like I said, I, that's what it was. Even if it was, even I if didn't, I didn't get one of these. I know you did. My, <laughs> my, my 10 tax bills, I didn't get one I know. of these. <laughs> even if I did look at it before I put it in, I don't have any say. <laughs> you know, but I didn't. She, you know, it, it was just intermingled it with the stuffing. And, and, and that was went. one of my points of saying, you know, maybe we need to, as a board, go over some of this stuff before it's put out and um, just make yeah. sure. No, nope. um, and, and mental note, if I'm still here next year, <laughs> before we send out, because a mailing like that won't happen again until next year. There isn't any in betweeners. I, I no, I'm just saying I, mental note that the letter needs to be corrected and reviewed by the board before ahead of time. And and I guess my other point on this matter is that it was actually done on the third and we was brought up at the meeting on the fifth. This was actually written up on the third. The third of what? October. Oh, okay. And it was mentioned on the fifth, our meeting. And it's like, that should have been just shown to us that that's yeah, what, what was being sent out. I'm not disagreeing with that. I know, I'm just- No, I, I'm not disagreeing. Okay. I'm not disagreeing at all. I mean, if I really, it, if I it really is, think all if you it was, need is a 1040 form. Right. If, it, should, if it was signed by Natalie Whitcomb, administrative assessor, that would be different, but it is signed the board of assessors. Exactly. So the board of assessors and, should and have that's, the opportunity- That's all I'm saying. Can have this <laughs> <laughs> and it's got the wrong dates in it too and the wrong phone number to call <laughs> but actually yeah somebody did call me on that they said you got the right phone number on the application but there's a wrong phone number and the right phone number is at the top of yes. it but the wrong is on the bottom yes. and she says and i called the number on the bottom and some guy answered yeah and I went, oh, well i'll make note of that yeah and the wrong date actually that it has is required by it um what did she put down for a date the ninth i think yeah because they were originally the the bills were supposed to have gone out on november 9th, right so did she right she did right. this ahead so of she her. said january 9th yes yeah yeah so i'm just trying to make a point that i i like to see that it's discussed as a board and agreed upon before things are mailed out and if it's saying from the Board of Assessors, I think it should be discussed. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I agree. Yeah, I don't disagree with that at all. Okay, that's all. That's all. Not that I wouldn't agree to, you know, the tax return or whatever. It's just that. Uh, well, yeah, the 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 cover letter is a great idea. Yeah. Not that most people read them. Unfortunately, I found that out the hard way. <laughs> but um, it it. It was, it's a good idea to have it in there. It's a good idea to put that in red, but yeah, it definitely needs to. I mean, I thought when we did, needs to be correct. what little we did talk on the fifth, we had said all we needed was a 1040. No, it wasn't even stated that. Uh, I think we just said proof of income. Okay. We needed, we needed to have, I, we did need proof of income. 
because that's when you asked me to send you the email that says we need proof of income. Oh, no, that was last week. That was, the, it was oh, yeah, that was last. No, that, I thought on the fifth. No, but, the fifth was when you said we discussed it, and then I got this, and it says proof of income, and I says, well, where did that come from? Gotcha. Right. And and it's like, well, I don't remember doing needing a proof of income or at least all that other things. And where it says required, it says that maybe I'm reading the it state is required. Thing. The state requires, I believe. Yes. I'm sure, almost sure yes. that it requires the 1040. Yes. Uh, to, to the way I read it, it says it may be. Maybe. No, I believe Lauren's words were proof of income is required. Okay, it might be her words, but I'm just saying on the applications, it says, or even in the uh, state guidelines, it says it may be required. It what may be is a little different than actually being required because it sounds to me like the towns could be, you know, the board could make a decision whether they want it required or not. That's the way I read it. So that's the way I was saying, you know, maybe are we, did we decide that or not? I know some, most of the other towns do require it. Yeah. Well, this is the really the first year where that we are. Right, right. So, right, but doesn't mean we weren't supposed to be. I think that's, well, I'm not saying that. I just, I would just like to make it clear as a board that what we're doing and what's being put out there and agree to it. Um, that's all. Okay. That's all my discussion wants to be on that. <laughs> okay. All right. I can, well, I can make a motion and I can eye it. No, it doesn't. She, no, it's not concerning money. She can vote on the motion. To <laughs> oh, so can. I can say yes, we can do that. <laughs> yes, you, you can. I can't. All right. Okay. Unless there's something else. I mean, I don't see. I, we can't I, sign anything. We, I, I don't see. We can't yeah. Discuss. I know. I'm sorry. I guess go get your test. Well, no, things can yes. be just things can be discussed. They just can't be voted on. So it's like why why I mean you can you can discuss this bill I have for our annual maintenance contract for the copier. <laughs> well, I, I'll you, I'll ask your opinion. I mean, because I've been trying to get the information from Lee as to well, she could have emailed, but she didn't. Um I mean, I still don't quite understand it and then it was said we can't discuss it unless it was on the agenda and that is on the um the house where she the garage that is attached was detached to bill it and I still don't quite understand why that would happen and I'm trying to learn to understand that so what is your opinion on that run it by me you you're can you Okay. Is this a particular property? Yes. No. Okay. Was it in error? I don't know. No, because Lee explained it to me. She had to do it that way, and I and I don't can't understand why. Is it attached it. with like your standard attached garage that you can pull in the garage, and there's a door that enters the house inside the garage, or is it one of those attached garages that you actually have to exit the garage, go outside, and walk around and go in the house? No, it's attached. So you can enter the house from the garage. Yes. Okay. Just, just, you know, I'm just throwing ideas out there. So, because I, I really don't understand why, because she's doing it as a detached garage. So explain to me why. Was it built in a different time? Well, who the heck knows? Well, I, I don't is know. There, is there a permit listed for building a garage in the, the section down here? No, I mean, this has been, uh, no. I mean, it was built in, where's the date of it? 1870. The whole thing? Because it's not, it wasn't a garage. When right. it was built, it was a carriage house. But no, why no. would you? It was a carriage house. Call, I remember, I, the, I remember I, the conversation. I don't know, I do too. I mean, I know what she said, but even if it was a carriage set, why would you call it a detached garage and put the year up to... Up to, I mean, if it's a mistake, it's a mistake, but I, and when you, I guess when I bring up things, can we correct them or do we decide that that's the way it is? And I think it should be discussed. That's all. 
Well, I, I certainly think it can be discussed. I mean, I so agree do you, that I would call that an attached garage, but that's my if point. there's some but other maybe reason. But maybe something like this justifies a site visit and an ex, you know, with right. new presence. So you and she can, you know, look at it again and say maybe it should be attached or this is why the it's why not it's detached. Okay. I, I just I, I, okay. I can sometimes um, actually being physically at the property as opposed to looking okay, at a picture Lori, calm down. makes a difference <laughs> <laughs> because she also explained that a garage that is attached to an older home, even if it's brand new, gets depreciated to what the age of the house is, right? I, yes, I believe that's true. So why would you call an older barn that was built probably when the house was built and you now it's used as a garage and call it detached? Does that make sense? No, I, I without actually studying the, the layout and seeing it, I would say it doesn't make sense, but a, there may be a reason there. Because she says it was used to be a horse barn or something, but that doesn't make it you should put it in as being built um, as, I might need my glasses, as in 1960. Okay. I mean, these are just errors that I pick up that I don't believe that that's the way it should be assessed, let's say. All we can do is look into it and see what her reasoning is. Well, she said it used to be an old horse barn. So, but even if it was an old horse barn, you still shouldn't assess it for being built in 1960. No, I mean, unless they made a major change to it. Okay. If, if they made a, a major change to the, I would say if they took all, of, let's say they took all the stables out, poured a cement floor, put two overhead garage doors in it, then I probably think differently. Well, why would you, okay? I'll, I'm listening to that, but so why would you say that that would be a detached being assessed as? I didn't. I didn't say anything about a detached. I'm saying the difference in the year is because they made changes in it. If they made major changes in it, then that would change. The effective date if you do a certain amount of work. Okay, but if, if she's saying it's a new garage put on an old house, even if it's brand new, it gets depreciated down to the age of the house. And she says we lose out on taxes because of that. And, and I understand that's if that's the way it goes, that's the way it goes. Yeah. So why would you put a value on a detached that was probably built in 19, 1890? I don't have an answer for that. Well, you would have to need an opinion as to. My opinion is it would not be detached. Right. Well, that's what my I was questioning. Why is that? that you know, that in this particular case, if they had made major changes and so forth, then I would say it wasn't attached. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there may be something that. We know that I that we don't know well, as far as regulations thing, go. But. Well, the only thing that I you remember hearing that that it was because it used to be a horsepower, and so or yeah. probably what was considered a carriage house. Well, where they would you know they would bring the buggies in and the horses yeah. and then go back outside. They couldn't enter the house from there. They you know like now when you pull into your garage you can just walk into your kitchen without going back outside and that's why I had asked that question because if you have to if no. there isn't direct access that would be that might be well, the justification. They can you can call an attached garage with even though you have to go outside because it's attached and there's still and you're still adding it as an attached garage if there's something attaching it if there's an open porch you're calling it an attached garage. So that excuse doesn't hold I'm up. I'm not making an excuse. I'm, just, I'm not saying I'm an excuse. I didn't, mean, it, I didn't maybe, mean an excuse. You know, I didn't mean an excuse. I'm just 
Sorry, I didn't I mean that. I think it constitutes a site visit. I mean, anything that has a question like that, I think constitutes a site visit. I mean, they, they're supposed to be visited on a regular basis anyway. So here's a good reason for a visit to this property to be scheduled. I mean, if you're supposed to visit them all every three years and it's been at least three years since we've gone, I, I think that any questions like that. Uh, when was the last time it's been there? Complete ends on, in, on the 12th. So it would have been, how many years ago was that? What do you mean? The 2012. I was so that's 10 years. That's 10 so years. that definitely constitutes a site visit. Okay. Well, I think it could be beneficial to whoever. I don't know. It's your old house. I know, but I don't own it. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's got, it's, it's not affecting me. <laughs> no, no, I know. I'm just saying. I just, I just saw this and it's like, it's not, how can that not be, be attached? In the middle of something, and this is attached. This is considered attached, but this is a. Yeah, I, I, I would say that was wrong, but I. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I, I mean, I just. I asked for other ones because she said there's several others in along Main Street or local that she had to do the same thing to, and it just doesn't make sense to me. And I haven't seen anybody else, so that's all. All right. I move want... we adjourn. Okay. I I second. <laughs> We're adjourned, and that is the end. Of